know about relationships, but you're wrong. Listen, there's no magic bullet. I'm teaching life skills. When you sick, you need medicine. It don't always taste good. Nah. But it'll get you better. You, you, you need this medicine. Yeah. It ain't gonna always taste good. But this is what you need. Men and women, bottom line, we need to have the conversation. Your partner wants to give up control, but only if you know how to drive. This is about being the best you you could ever be, whoever you are. I don't care if you're a man, a woman, LGBTQ, space alien. I'll save anybody. I don't care. I'll teach a hedgehog how to have a threesome. What do you mean by that? Look, you don't have to listen to me, but you're wrong. Listen, I know I'm great. And I know you're thinking, Dante, there's no way I could be like you. But you could be me, you know why? Because you know who I was before I was me? I was you. you. Man school, 202. Better hear what I've got to say because you won't get it again. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. And I am really excited. Now, I know I've said that 500 times before, but this time I mean it. Harry, what's nice. popping? Nice. Finally. Finally. I'm working on, I'm trying to do some new catchphrases for 2021 because, you know, keeping the gators down is good. Yeah. But, you know, what's up and what's out? That's the new catchphrase oh, right now. We're trying. We're going to see which one catches on. How about beans Yo. and jelly? <laughs> beans and jelly? Beans what's and up jelly? What's, out? what's up and what's out? That's what I want to know. Harry, the only nigga that's going to pull a muscle trying to figure out a catchphrase. <laughs> what's, the, what, what's the Russian one, Harry, from the SNL? Uh, that, Tommy Boy. Oh, yeah. oh. Uh -uh. oh, Funky Boy. Funky Boy. Uh. Yeah, the king's of catchphrase comedy. When Dre, what's going that? on, Dre? Ain't shit, bro. I'm chilling. There you go. I gotta, I gotta, we're we gonna get into the blood story, but uh, I gotta introduce my boy. This is my man. I, I've been watching this dude come up from a baby. A little baby. He was a little baby. I remember I used to hold him in my arms, like, Whoa, go to sleep, little man. Go to sleep. A wee lad. Now he's like 80. <laughs> now he's got grills. He's got Old gold teeth fuck. now. That's how gold, long it's he been. He got his foot. He's my little dude. Uh, give it up for Matt Richards, y'all. My oh. nigga. Ah, oh, it's good to have you on, dog. Hi, everybody. <laughs> oh, real first, real quick, I want to deal with something. Um, this is like a little in-house. Um, as me, Harry, and 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 Dre are like brothers, and we're like friends, and there was something we had a little friction and stuff, and I wanted to talk about it because I feel like I misrepresented who who Dre was in the first place. We would joke and stuff about Dre being dumb and shit like that, and it was just <laughs> us snapping e on each other. Accurate. And, and <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the type of thing that got us in trouble, Matt. I'm gonna come <laughs> take your grills, nigga. <laughs> What'd you say? I'm gonna come take your grills. You don't know where I live. <laughs> Hold up, let me finish this real quick because this sorry, is sorry. serious. The so and we were treating Andre like when we met Andre, like he was younger and he was a younger dude, and we kind of got into this. Harry and I both got into this rut of not respecting yeah. him as a man, and that is never the case. Yeah. Um, that was on air. Jokingly, we didn't respect him because definitely and, had respect. And for it, him was off a, there, it was it was an sure. oversight yeah, yeah. in my part to to on my part personally, and I I. I apologize to him, Mary, and I wanted to officially apologize to him on the air that Andre's not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> we was joking, and I and I and it hurt me, and and Dre really hurt me that it hurt you like that yeah. really bothered me. I've been and uh and the same I, here from from my uh, Harry end. Yeah. called me two days later. He was like, he was, "Did you speak to him? Did you speak?" And he, and he was Harry was a couple of days. He was all sulky. And yeah, shit like that. It bothered me. It bothered so, me because we, we we misread the situation. You know, we you know, and we took it for granted. Brother, we yeah. actually took him for granted. And I wanted to officially apologize that 
Uh, Andre is not dumb. I respect Andre. No. I love we him. We got to find a new thing him. for the D. Andre, you got to come up with. I'm still teasing about being dumb, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so that's beautiful, yo. That's yeah. mad beautiful. Definitely. That's the mad apology beautiful. is definitely due. <laughs> because you know how the people are listening to the show and then they they put so old you niggas talking to him sideways on the fucking DMs and shit. And he'd be like, nigga, come on. Stop. Stop. So I just wanted to up front just say that, yeah. Dre. I apologize, okay, man. man. To oh, get yeah. me emotional, yo. <laughs> so which is a great thing because with Matt, I just saved Matt's life. Yeah, he you almost did. Died. He almost died. Yo, this was the wildest shit. I I scratched myself. Now, before you say, oh, it's a scratch. Don't that's be what I said. I was like, it's a mm. scratch. Nigga, how you? Yo, but go ahead, tell the story. It. Zoom in and zoom out while Matt's talking you, just to fix you your scratch the cross the wrist or some shit. No, no, no the leg. my leg, my my upper thigh. I scratched it and I lost about a liter of blood. Jeez. Jeez. That's blood was more spraying than a scratch. all over the bathroom. Uh, here's what I think it was like, because I said scratch. So we a was on scratch. we was on Clubhouse. Yeah, we was on Clubhouse. Matt just happened to be on Clubhouse and, and we was it was talking like around six thirty in the morning. though. Right, right. So and I uh, my leg. I don't know what the fuck to do. He I'm scratched his leg and he keeps talking with we're on Clubhouse shooting the shit and fucking Matt keeps talking about the blood. The blood is all over. <laughs> the blood is dripping. And so we're like, nigga, it's a scratch. How the fuck? It's a, a scratch. scratch. What's here's what I here's what I think happened. He either had a scab and scratched it off, or pulled off a mole or something. So, but he so we on the clubhouse. He dips out, then he comes back. Yo, I'm still bleeding. He keep, like this <laughs> going on for like a, like an hour. It was right? bad. It was bad. So Dante's like, Yo, text me your address. I'm already in the city. I'll pull up. And I was like, Oh, you don't have to do that, man. But now I'm lightheaded. I'm feeling woozy. <laughs> this is. Terrible here. I was like, scratch. I want to go to the hospital, but I got to put on pants and I'm going to mess up my pants with all this blood. Yeah, I don't want to fuck up my pants for my yeah. life. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just like, <laughs> ah, I'll I'll deal with bleeding out, I suppose. So I'm like, my nigga, I got I'll get I'll go to Dwayne Reed. I'll get some gauze. I'll come out. I'll, I'll bandage you up. Bye, At bye. 7 a.m. Dante went to like three Dwayne Reeds and CVS is trying to find bandages. Because with the COVID, they don't open 24 hours no more. They what? start at like 7, 7.30, so 8 o'clock. He remembered. He was like, yo, shit, I got a first aid kit in the car, in the Jeep. Let me uh, let me grab that. So he parked, came upstairs in my building. And he's when he saw all the blood everywhere. What nigga, was the first he thought? said scratch, right? He said scratch. I'm like, come on, nigga. You this nigga's clown. Like I go in the bathroom. The bathroom is like some fucking uh, red. Some the, like the fuck. What's the shit? Murder. Red rum. Nigga. The shining. <laughs> yeah. The f the floor is covered with blood. There's blood in the sink. There's blood on the toilet. The in the dog spraying. bowl. The I'm like, what the fuck? So I look at it. She's like, yo, I scratched the back of my leg. And I he goes. So I got the dope band aids. You know, I got the super duper. <laughs> But Real when he, nigga move, he moves this shit everybody up. brag about their band-aids. <laughs> nah, his shit. the best motherfucking you know band-aids. You know how I do. This band-aids not even out. I don't even fuck with you. Curate. Curate. Get these. white band-aids. He's so talking about them like, in quotation marks. I don't like fuck Jordans. with Curate. I don't fuck like, with Curate. Like the Air Jordans. You can't even get these colors here. Some niggas fuck with Curate and Johnson oh, and Johnson. Shit. Yo, strictly Johnson and Johnson. So, um... He pulls his hand away and son, the blood starts gushing on his ankle. Not my like, ankle, my leg. Your leg. Oh, what's at the end of your leg? It was the ankle is part of your, your leg. It was son. Like, y'all telling the story. Yo, what the fuck you doing? You're right. So, you're right, right. <laughs> I yield my time. <laughs> so uh, I go, oh, shit. So I put the dope band-aids on. The blood pulls up behind the band-aids, pushing the butt, it's pushing the band-aid off. So I slap another one on, slap another one on, right? He's standing there, he's got two white dogs. They fucking running through the blood, running this blood pity oh, packs all over the motherfucking shit. house, right? The cats is on the fucking trap. He got a cat treadmill. The cats running on the treadmill. There's blood everywhere. I'm like, yo. So it's I'm, like I, Willy Wonka's chocolate factory, <laughs> but just blood. Treadmill, but bro, just blood. Just, 
<laughs> like, oh, hold on, so let's, see, fucking, one let's see the that's treadmill the, here. That's the cat treadmill, son. Oh Swear my to God. God, all of this is going on, and the cat is running on the fucking treadmill <laughs> like a mate, like he's on crystal meth, just running and running around. So I take the fucking bandits. The blood is pooling behind the three band aids. So I take a fucking towel. I wrap a towel around his leg and I take a belt and I tighten the belt up on the motherfucker. You made put a, a tourniquet. tourniquet. And Word. then I picked him like up, up like a baby and I laid him on the bed. <laughs> I was the whole time I was worried about fucking up my comforter as the new comforter. We didn't fuck up the comforter, though, right? There's a little blood on it, but it'll come out in the wash. So bung and I leave him on the fucking bed. I lay him down and I stroke his brow and I go, you're going to be all right, kid. <laughs> he made me feel like I was going to make it. <laughs> and then and then I fucking and I fucking mop the floor. Cause I didn't, you know, I could, I mean, I couldn't let the dogs and just the whole house would be poking out blood, poking out because dogs running around through the blood. I mopped the floor and I broke out, went home. What the fuck kind was, of scratch? I'm not. Yeah, what was his scratch? Son, I don't yeah. fucking scratch. know. Bro, Here's what I'm wow. saying. I'm understanding. You, you know so what, what I was, think it was? What I think it was is like, like one of them varicose veins. I yo or like Harry a vein. Got very close veins. It was like a vein that was that's really close. To the skin. That's funny as hell. <laughs> very, very close, close veins. veins. <laughs> it was a vein that was really close to the skin, and I yeah. scratched it, and so the veins. That's directed. hilarious. It's very. It's, Matt said he got very close to the skin <laughs> veins. I got very close veins. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck could have scratched you? Son, he was bleeding like a pig, yo. It was wild, bro. But it and stopped. But just the come, bandages. Look, stopped. It never stopped. Like I just wrapped it in the towel. So what's and I good just... with your leg now? I'm fine now. How, how, what is the? How does the wound look, look like? Yeah, like it's a tiny little hole. A tiny little hole. That man. So it, it was didn't even. Spraying. Yeah, it was. I don't know what the fuck was going on. If Dante didn't come when he did, I'd have probably just kept bleeding and I would have passed out. Blood thinners or something? What the fuck? I thought, but he was drinking fucking Brugal first thing in the morning, though, at six o'clock. So, you know, the alcohol thins your blood out. No, I didn't start drinking until after I was bleeding. Oh. At, at seven o'clock, though, he I was just like, took, "Fuck he it!" Took if I'm going down, he took I'm a bottle of Brugal rum to the head at seven in the morning. So. Breakfast the champions. It was technically dinner. <laughs> Jesus. That's Jesus, wild. Matt. We almost lost Matt Richards in one of the stupidest ways possible. From a scratch <laughs> on a very close vein. And he'd have been <laughs> in that very house. Close vein. The, <laughs> auto- the uh, obituary died scratching a very close vein. What? He goes, close and then they'd be like, he he passed out because of the very close veins. And then his dogs and his cat ate his face. Yeah. That's what actually. Hey, um, <laughs> so actually, dogs will stay next to their dead owner for weeks. Whereas cats, you got two days. <laughs> That's why cats is pieces of shit. I'm cats will wait two days, and when they notice that they bowl ain't full, they go for the tender vittles. That's why they call them f- pussies. They <laughs> tender <need> vittles. <laughs> yeah, they go for like the eyeballs, the eyelids, uh, oh, the, the nose, the lips. Yeah. Yuck. Bite my Ma- arm, nigga. You gonna go? Matt, no Matt got man. You got what? What do you have? You got a cat, two dogs. I have two cats, two dogs. I got this fish tank. Uh, what I happened to it. your lizards? Didn't you have lizards there? Uh, this is the dumb shit. I'm still paying for them to be boarded in L.A. Oh, my God. <laughs> this uh, is the dumb shit. After you damn near died because <laughs> you touched your leg a little bit. This, he just, this lizard they, they was going to eat this nigga face. It's, it's, Yo, it's if like, I didn't save him. <laughs> what? I'm so confused. <laughs> it was just he had no face and grills. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't eat the grills, though, so I'll be flying the casket. That's it. Crazy shit, man. What's going on, B? How you doing? How you holding up with this thing? Anything? I can't complain, man. It's actually been I call it a I call it a pandemic. Why you call it a pandemic? Because I just been racking up bands. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Bands son. in what sense? Banning people or what's no, money, no, so, man? Or uh, bands? Oh, bands with you, a D. Thank you, Dre. See, he's not oh, dumb. Yeah. Dre's just in tune with the streets. Y'all <laughs> niggas don't know about the streets. <laughs> no, he he dumb too. Bands <laughs> one, with the streets. <laughs> the one band is a thousand dollars. 
Oh, that, okay. Got right. it. I get it. It's like the yeah the the paper band that they Depending put around like where a you're from. A stack like a is stack. A, a thousand. A band yeah. is a thousand. So it's a pandemic because I've been you blessed. making money. Yeah, I'm not to brag, but you know I feel blessed. I'm, you kicking how both. how have you been making money, Matt, throughout all of this? You still of doing the trivia joint? I'm still hosting trivia. I am. It's um, all online shit. It's 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 literally. I work 15 minutes a day. And there's more people online, I would assume, because of the pandemic. Yeah, so possibly yeah. like whatever numbers you were doing in 2018 with it. Now it's like, well, we no. all home, so let's play trivia. Yeah, that's, like, yeah. that, that's what yeah. I thought it would happen. But in actuality, I mean, we're still maintaining really great numbers, but it's it. They were games that I'd host where it was 700,000 people playing seven, yeah. 800,000 at our height. We were clocking like two million players a day. Mm. The questions are hard. So people got like trivia fatigue. Mm. Now we're pulling. That's around. funny. <laughs> it's, it's real. We, we've been pulling around like 50 to 80,000 a night. That's cool. Which is still multiple Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The game has changed. B. So I'm doing that shit. I'm writing. Uh, I got a new show. I can't talk too much about that is debuting at a theater in New York City with COVID in mind. So it'll be super safe. Uh, mm. June 2021 is a one man show. It's going to be dope. OK, nice, nice, oh, nice. nice. And dope, I'm, dope. Uh, you know, producing a new uh, TV pilot. So fingers crossed for the green light. But they gave us the money to make it. So we started shooting. Well, if the you, need first week. Un- you need an uncle or old nigga in it. <laughs> Hell I'll yeah. let your boy. You, you need um, that. Uh, I've been writing or, on or, uh, uh, Michael uh, Chase, arms, show. an arms dealer or a a, <laughs> a poet. <laughs> no, subway, the, a subway streetcar poet. Thing. I was just talking to some cats about this the other day. It's like a testament of somebody's dopeness is who else they bring on that they view as dope. Oh, dopeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if ever I get a platform where I can put people on, that's all I want to do. Yeah. I feel you. That's, you write on Shay's gold. Shay's sketch thing too, right? Yeah. So Che got a sketch show uh, that's going to HBO, and I've been in the writers' rooms for that for a couple months, and I'm excited for everybody to see it. We've been shooting for the last mm. uh, two months, two three months. Yeah. So it's that's looking dope, real man. funny, real funny so far. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm really interested. In it. It's because it's you know I, it's our. It's our click, you know what right, I mean? Yeah. So it's like a, it's going to be interesting to see how that comes off because it's it's us, right. you know, I mean, yeah. even though it ain't us, it's us. So that's that's dope, man. It's for the um, culture. It's funny because I don't know if I've told you, you know, Mike, I I used to strip with Che's uncles. Get the that's fuck out of here. They was yeah, his uncle Nathan Ingram was a uh, <laughs> badass fucking. Now, I fifth. didn't expect the name. I gotta take the grills out for this. <laughs> I didn't expect the name. Nathan Ingram. His name was oh, Apollo. Shit. His stripper name was Apollo, but he was a martial artist, like ju- one of them old ju- Ma- Dre, like one of them old jujitsu dudes, like yeah, Henzo style. Yeah, well, no, like Mo- Moses Powell. Before that. Moses okay. Powell, all that Japanese jujitsu shit. OK, OK, classic. I used to strip with them. And when we would have they would videotape the strip tapes. Michael Shea, from, Michael Shea from SNL, if you don't know who I'm talking about, they, he would they would come home and he was like eight or something like that. And they would watch us pick up these fat bitches and throw them around and roll them up. Funny. <laughs> That's so when I funny. when Matt, when I first saw uh, Che at Stand Up New York, Che goes, yo, you know, my. My uncle, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> me and your Apollo? uncle used to slap bitches in the face with our dicks. <laughs> <laughs> he already knew he's seen the videos. He's see, he seen all of it. He was like eight and nine. They would be him and his, his um his cousin would be up fucking like eight and nine years well, the old. Part watching is he the recognize you at the urinal. He's yeah, like, hey, wait so a minute. Hey, I <laughs> know this guy. Minute. I've Stop seen it. that before. <laughs> <laughs> that dick before. That's you know my uncle. <laughs> Matt, 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 Matt was Matt was my little shorty too, boy. Matt was bro, you know what? It was funny. So okay, I, I, my dad moved in with me recently. Uh, um, he was living in Yonkers, and there was a fire in his building, so they condemned the whole building. So mm. pops has been staying with me for like the last week, mm. and uh, I, I let him know that you saved my life 
And he was like, Dante Nero? <laughs> this is his words verbatim. He's like, man, fuck him. And I was like, what? What you mean? He's like, ain't that the nigga that used to pick on you when you was selling tickets? <laughs> He's like, you, you was 14 and you told me about some light-skinned asshole. And I was like, no, ah, dad. That's funny. I said, dad, that was not Dante. There was a guy on the street team for Ha that yeah. if you squint, looked like Dante. Right. OK. Mm. His name was Jersey Mike. Jersey Mike was an asshole. OK. Me and Jersey Mike <laughs> had beef since I was 14 years old. So my dad this whole time Dude, thought Dante, Dante was Jersey Mike. <laughs> That's funny shit. I was getting ready to get, get, I was getting ready to get snuffed by a 74 year old. For real. It's about to be all in sight. No, you my dad, my dad is 50. <laughs> my dad's uh 54. Me, oh, and that nigga, me, and, me and that nigga probably went to school together. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but he's I let him my, know. He's in my third grade class. Oh, he, yeah. he stopped, he stopped that immediately. That he was nigga's like, turkey, hand turkey was whack. Your pops <laughs> couldn't do it. <laughs> I think his turkey was fucked up and his macaroni necklaces. Whack. Trash. <laughs> he stopped immediately. He, he felt he felt bad because he'd like, been hating me since you was 14. Basically, it's a good father. But I let him know. I was like, no, Dante is literally always since <laughs> since I met you, bro. You've always been like a big brother figure to me. I appreciate that, bro. Uh, I remember there was a maybe two times where I was young and dumb and drinking a bunch. He had you... this bad bitch. He had this be, like bet like just this bitch. Is, she poured out of no a business. sexy bottle, this nigga. <laughs> I had no. Well, you no actually did. Business. You actually did because she was an asshole. She but was. But 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 she was bad. Like, yeah, that's, that's why she was an asshole, I guess. Yeah. And then a box of rocks. Whew, and she had she had a ring in my Max nose. Nigga, she was running that nigga around like where, where he was so like he was like a around her. He was like a squirrel. Like he was like, what, what you like? What you, what's going on? Man. I would run to get her another drink before she was finished with the shit. first one. Oh, and shit. I and you know me, Harry. How many times you say, "Yo, yo, yo, come here, come, come here, here. Come yo, over come here. here, what are you get doing? Over here. What are you doing? Say, what, what the fuck are you doing?" That was probably at the Times Square Art Center, right? One of those. Yeah, it was Square absolutely Art. there. So yeah. I, I met her there because on the weekends they would like like after the last show. It would turn into like a, a private party. party venue. Yeah. Well, it used to so be a strip DJs club that they turn yeah. into a comedy club. It used and, to be a uh, peep yeah. show. Flat with and the it was some hooker, redhead chick they had that got murdered. Ghosts. Yeah, they had hooker ghosts in there. There was a hooker ghost uh, <laughs> that haunted the back bathroom. She would run up and just jerk it off real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and <you> just, <laughs> <laughs> All your singles is missing. Like, what the fuck happened what to my chain? <laughs> They Damn, left the hundred dollar bills. It's the singles. It was the ginger ghost. She only give me like ghost. she give me like half a hand job, just like a do 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 do, and, and vanish. She give you a hand job, but it was done after the the second the song was done. You're like two song, you two song ghost, two song ghost, <laughs> nigga. So I met Shorty at the club, and we hit it off or whatever, and we start dating. And well, Dante she came beat. to that club. She, you knew she was an asshole to begin with because that <laughs> club was. I don't know how well, they got him. She was him. there for a friend's birthday party, a friend of her mom, actually. And so uh, this is funny. Dante goes, he peeps how I guess sprung I was mm. and how there was an imbalance in the relationship. Yeah, I can feel a, there was a, a disturbance, disturbance in the, in the force. force. <laughs> yeah. he, he pulls me to the side and he's like, what does she do? And I was like, well, she she's currently working at Bed Bath and Beyond, but she's so an aspiring model and double nothing an untrained <laughs> an untrained life insurance agent. And Dante goes, what do you do? And I said, uh, well, I'm a comedian and a magician. And he said, she fucks with you because you're hilarious. You have status because you're hilarious. Don't let her walk all over you the way she is. She was. I admit now I was I was being taken advantage of oh, yeah. emotionally. And uh, she was a spiritual succubus. A spiritual succubus. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I can't. I don't I have like a hundred of those stories where a nigga go. I remember, you know, fucking uh, you ever you ever, uh, you know, Graham Graham K. Yeah. yeah. 
Graham K and I are Eskimo brothers. What the oh, fuck is Eskimo brothers? They, they when you fuck, fuck the same, same broad. chick. Oh. Differently at other times. I'm going to just translate everything Matt saying. I, I got yo, you, bro. I think I fucked you. you. <laughs> did, I, did I fuck you, girl's mother? Uh oh. Well, no. Wow. <laughs> Who, me? That's, here's the thing. Only Dante can say that. Mother. Only Dante can so say Dante, that and have it I not brought, be an insult. I brought the girl's mom around because it was Dante's advice. He was like, look, she, the girl was getting bad advice from her mom about how I should be giving her an allowance and all kind of oh, goofy wow. shit. What the fuck? Yeah. And Dante goes, hey, bring her mom to the show on Friday. <laughs> so I bring the mom to the show on Friday. <laughs> She's bringing Dante drinks. She's Dante. doing all this. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what is happening? So Dante absolutely could have smashed the mom, but I don't think I don't think he did. I did smash the mom. I don't think you smashed the mom. I'm telling you, I smashed the mom. This is I'm, a funny conversation. I don't think you smashed the mom. I don't think you're dick. Why not? Through. Why don't you think I smashed the mom? <laughs> Because she only came by that one time. She was, she we was went walking on a date. straight. She was walking straight. So he's like, me and her went out. smashed her. All right. Me and her oh. went out. We went out. All right. Yeah, I smashed her mom. So that's oh, probably man. why we broke up. <laughs> I did you a favor. Dante, Dante just... smashed her mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's how anybody out there want to break up. I smashed the mom. <laughs> Let me fuck Dave. Let me, I'm the mom smasher. Oh man! Dante told you to bring her around like it was a broken VCR back in the day. Like, bring I'll it around. Let me it. see if I can take, take a look. A look. <laughs> see what I can do. Let me do. take a look at it. Let me plug it in. See what's what. And then I'm not gonna be doing nothing. I'll bring it in. I'll put it up on the lift. We'll <laughs> see. Take Let's a see look. what it take is. A, at least it keeps blinking twelve. <laughs> Yo. Yeah, but I'm Matt, you, you, so obviously I know that we've had you on the show before, so I know Dante helped you with that advice. Have you been sticking to it? Has it? How how no, has everything been lately? I'm an idiot. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're an idiot. Self proclaimed. <laughs> what have you uh, done wrong? What have you been doing wrong, Matt? Well, well, never mind the fact that it's we, you know, it's a Panasonic out here. Uh, uh, yeah. No doubt. Panasonic. Yeah. So, like, trying to navigate dating in a Panera Bread is weird. Yeah. But it's, you had it. You was living with your chick for a minute. Yeah, we don't talk about that. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> but you know, we gave we, we, we did talk. We talked about it while you was bleeding to death. Yeah, you and I spoke <laughs> about it briefly. Did uh, you do what I tell you to do? OK, I'm going to talk this up to loss of blood. All right. I don't remember much from All right. that day. All right. We'll, so we'll talk about it later. I don't want to. You know, I know you don't want to deal with it. But the, the funny thing is, I always say this. Whenever I get a guy in here, and he don't want to deal with it. Right. That's the time you should deal with it. All right. So boom. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why, because <laughs> before I before you just jump on it, I'll tell you why. Because if you're on, if you're being honest about what if you really are being honest about what's going on, right? And you're misrepresenting, you're you're not misrepresenting what the dynamic of what's going on, right? Mm -hmm. That's always the best way, even if it ultimately makes it a situation. Why you like so if you say what you actually feel, what's honestly the truth, and somehow she hears this, right? You should be man enough to go, well, this, this is how I feel. And I, I've ex I've actually spoke to you about this before and you're just not really paying attention to it. But when you're holding back really what your what your honest thought is and you're, you're hiding that is because, you do know, you're hedging your bets. And the bottom line is if you're ultimately going to resent the person for not saying honestly what makes you happy or what doesn't make you happy like uh, somebody could take from you right as long as you're comfortable taking it getting it took but the minute you're not comfortable taking it you got to say i'm not i'm not i don't i don't want to do that no more and if somebody's going to get mad at you because you're just expressing how you feel and ultimately what are they saying they go i want you to shut up and hold all your feelings inside because I'm better than you and you better do it. What I tell you to do, I'm going to bend your will because, you know, I'm better than you. And well, if you, I hear what you're saying. That is that's not the case in this particular situation. I know that I'm what I'm my, the point I was making is the truth of it 
is what you need to what, you deal with that because if the tr- if and it doesn't matter if you're talking about it you're talking about it. if you're not talking about it, it's still the truth yeah you're right i talk about it on stage so there's no difference uh we were together for a while we were living together in a location that was uh, it was great her family had the apartment for a long time mm-hmm. it allowed me to save up a bunch of money because the goal was to buy a house mm-hmm. for 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 the zoo that we accumulated oh so y'all were talking about future shit yeah, yeah. okay i mean we'd known each other since we were like 21 and uh it seemed like that's where we were headed however the pressure of quarantine which is something i think a lot of people can relate to yeah. got real as fuck fast in what sense was, uh, how did it affect you like in what sense did the quarantine just living together or just having a so she had lost her job because she works in a school so she couldn't work i was uh, before quarantine i took on all the financial responsibility mm-hmm. like, i'm blessed to be making x y and z the least i could do is make it so that any money you make you can reinvest into yourself. She had no bills or financial obligations other than investing in what she wanted to do with her career. Okay. Um, I love, you know, you know, you way stacking the deck against her already, but go ahead. Well, this is, I mean, that's what it is. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I get it. So I'm doing what I got to do or what I'm, what I've learned to do as, as a man provide, mm. I've, I'm taking care. I'm, you know, doing all this and that. I'm cooking. Oh, it's open. My dad just got here. Yeah. You could tell him I'm not the one, the Dante <laughs> that Jersey he hated. <laughs> Is that that? Jersey Mike. Oh, shit. Hold on one second, y'all. I'm Brooklyn Dante. <laughs> right, well, okay. it's, Brooklyn Dante. His dad, his dad, his dad was going to punch me in the mouth, son. That is hilarious. Look at those. That's a Jersey Mike. Mike. Though. That is that sounds like a subs place. Like you go there to get a good hoagie. I go to Jersey it Mike's. Is. Yeah, I love the yeah, Italian like hero. Sandwiches. It's probably not the same Jersey Mike. I'm assuming that whoever was selling tickets for Ha or whatever is not. Gone he has a felony. Open. You selling tickets for Ha? Yeah. Your name Jersey Mike on Times Square? You've been to jail it. before. Well, okay. a few times <laughs> that time, yeah. those Times Square shows were the worst, by the way, yeah. because it oh, was yeah. just it's a character builder. It yeah. was the worst. <laughs> did you ever get to play it, Andre, or that was yeah. before that, your time? Oh, you did. Yeah, I, got, I got in there a little bit at the very yeah. end, right mm-hmm. before it, because that that place was just it was just fight. You see me in it? You saw me in it? I saw you in it once, one time. Oh, Maybe this was oh, this was crazy. after I this was after the heyday when when Cisco took over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was I was like new Cisco back there and everything like well, that. Th- was that when they were doing the main stage? No, no, because did you do it before they turned it into a um a, a haunted house? Yes. <laughs> OK, yes. Before before they changed it. And then Is that your dad? I don't want to say I'm not Jersey Mike. No, no. Dad knows Dad, Come here. <laughs> <laughs> He knows you're not Jersey Mike now. <laughs> he just got in from work. Should. And some beef that Dante didn't know he was in. Got an end beef. I'm ending beef. I apologize to Andre. I put Dante, in. Andre, and Harry. Wait, I can't see him. I can't. We're shaking. What up? He got to go look. What's happening? I'm not Jersey Mike. So I don't want to get snuffed on. I see I that now. I see. I don't want to get that. snuffed on no bullshit, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't. Funny. I don't run up on folks no more till I'm sure. <laughs> good strategy. <laughs> that's a good policy. This whole good, time he thought Dante was Jersey Mike. Yo, that's hilarious. Listen, tell your father to text me. We gonna go bust Mike Jersey Mike's ass. You <laughs> <laughs> gonna get a tandem ass whooping from 14 years ago? Yeah, Jersey Mike not gonna know what happened. He's gonna be like, who are y'all niggas? <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't do nothing to you. I was like, you don't know the kind of negative energy Matt's father was putting on me. <laughs> not, <laughs> not letting me become successful because he was fucking putting that heavy Harboring. that the heavy evil fucking eye. evil eye on me. <laughs> I didn't even juicy. deserve it. He put the <laughs> so, Oh, man. Let's get, uh, I just want to hear more getting back to what was going on with Matt, man. The, yeah, so, the quarantine so you and everything. Paid everything. You're paying everything. Yeah, 
but also I was saving up for the the larger space, you know. So mm-hmm. it got to a point where the stress of quarantine was enough, and then with all the racial injustice in the country, I was going out and protesting every day. I was yeah, I home, saw you on the live stream. Coming home tired as fuck, organizing protests, meeting with a bunch of random cyclists. <laughs> cyclists. <laughs> yeah, we was we was doing all kind of shit. Uh, I guess she wasn't understanding that. She's like, I feel like, I feel like Oof. you're neglecting She didn't understand me. protest? <clears throat> no, she did. She came to me with one and she saw how real it was because the cops did like some sort of pincer maneuver and like cornered us. And then it was like, we're arresting everybody. I was like, this is when we leave. Let's go. <laughs> Drop the So sign. she's, the what did she say about the, the you know, she just didn't. I feel like give me the is it, yeah, whenever you hear so. that whenever you hear that I feel like I mean I don't know I feel like <laughs> she she just got like weird and it wasn't I, I didn't feel like I was being supported uh mentally sure she didn't have was, you feel like she didn't have your back in any way well, I would she come, wasn't she wasn't supporting you uh financially either so yeah. uh, nothing well, I, from I never, nothing leave nothing <laughs> the <other has. laughs> yeah, that's funny. so i'm, I'm like with me. <laughs> i come home i want to unwind how i want to unwind and decompress or whatever and usually that's i throw on a tv i cook something i throw on a tv and watch something that takes my mind mm-hmm. off of it so the food ain't cooked when you go home you go work you bring on the bacon, fry it up in the pan and the protest co- and protest and never, never tell that you're a man. Is that what it is? <laughs> oh, God, I didn't want to get into this. Well, I'm drinking. Shout out to Uncle Nearest. He was the slave that taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. Oh, oh wow. Get no fucking credit for it. <laughs> we got to get. Well, he, we did. Gotta- he did in uh, in Jack Daniels autobiography. He gives sole credit to Uncle Nearest. For teaching him the recipe. Uncle Nearest was a slave, but he was also a master distiller. And he literally taught Jack Daniels everything he knows. Yeah. But the wow. only thing I'm like, I'm thinking is that he was like, yeah, thanks. And then got all of the benefit. All of oh, the yeah, money, they, all of oh, yeah. everything. Oh, so, you're talking Uncle about you, just some, t- Andre, you're talking about America. What yeah, are you talking like, about? The fuck? So now a descendant of Uncle Nearest has got the OG recipe. They're making it. They're starting to mass produce it. And Jack Daniels is like taking them and and helping to propel. They're actually doing it. All right. All right. right. At least they're doing something right. The shit is is smooth as fuck. It's 100 proof. So I might get real reckless depending on how much time we got left on this podcast. We we still got more. (laughs) So uh, long story short. Apparently, I was a terrible person to be around. Mm. Oh, boy. Uh, and that ain't true. That's cooking, that's changing. That's changing. Animals and terrible, Matt. She just, goes, animals. she just goes, I need I need space. So myself and all the animals signed a lease. Elsewhere and gave us mm-hmm. space. You gave her her space. The yeah, most the right space. thing. You were 12, spacious. 12 months of space. 12 months. Now, do y'all, do y'all months. speak or y'all don't speak? We are. And I think it's. Uh, I think she's coming to some realizations about how she was and who she was being during the quarantine. Uh, and what about, what about what she accused you of? Okay. I'm not, not to make it sound like I'm an angel in all this. I was definitely flirting with goofy bitches. Okay. Uh, But here's, my, here's my thing is, is the chief discover that you was flirting with goofy bitches? Of course. Oh, she, she, caught, she caught you <laughs> flirting with goofy bitches. And so she got insecure about it. And then she then cranked up the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, and you was but like you was flirting. With, I bet I bet while you was flirting with these goofy bitches, you stopped paying the bills, right? Never. <laughs> oh, no. But no. well, then you then you stopped cooking then, right? No. No, you didn't stop. Oh, I'm just trying to make sure. I Dante, just wanna, just, it's a good line of questioning. You're very forgetful here, but it's I mean, fair, I, just, I, I thought that would all go together. Right. You're just making a lot of assumptions. They're pretty bold. Dante. This is ridiculous. You know what I mean? I kept, I mean, I kept up my end of most of the shit. All of it. Um, see how it ends up. Guys, guys are very self-reflective about breakups because right now, Matt is even now trying to think of like, 
well, what I mean, obviously, if I'm being accused of being a, a bad boyfriend, I must have been bad to some degree. But what, did I, I, you, what, did, what I did I do? I do? Entertaining other women while you're in a relationship is, is frowned upon. Not great. It is shady. It's not it's great. shady. I, I get it is shady, but I'm, I'm just saying everything is relative. No? So it's going through somebody's phone. Ah, uh, well, let's see that. Mm. Found it up the yeah. classic way. Yeah. I don't go through her phone because I know it's full of dicks. <laughs> That's wild. Most women's phones are full of dicks. Not that they're seeking it. It's just niggas is assholes. And when they know it's, a chick is in a relationship. Women, women, women do like dicks, though. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, son. This, uh, Trust women. me, son. Even chicks I thought didn't like dicks. Interesting. They, they, dick. they really like dicks. Pop that sports bra off. Get busy. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting tank. <laughs> you know, fuck a girl with corn rolls and uh and a tank top with ace bandage taping the titties now. She wearing the same chain as you. And you you unwrap <laughs> you unwrap her, she look like an Instagram bitch. And All then right, let's, let's she, not be toxic, okay? Then she wrap her titties back down and go pick up her son. I'm like, your son? It's, I thought you was a lesbian. Your corn rolls. Lesbians can have sons, Dante. No. But you talking about having dick, son? You know That's what the, I mean. What I'm saying is, about. when he he be like, "I'm a lesbian, I'm a lesbian," and then she be like, "Not like they had a son." It's like she's fronting because she was dipping in dick, and di which is fine. Either way, dipping either way. <laughs> but my my thing is, it's just like what you said. There's a level of in disingenuousness if there's dishonesty, right? So you shouldn't have been flirting on people if you like dick. You can like dick. But to hide to hide the fact that you like dick, right? And to appear as something that you're not is as dishonest than anything else. And why is somebody dishonest? Somebody's dishonest because they don't think that what they're what they really are is good enough. Ah. That's why you that's why you lie. I say this all the time. If you five foot four and you tell everybody you five foot six, you think five foot four ain't good enough. Heavy. So it's not a judgment on what you do. It's the judgment on the fact of what you present. It's and we're in a position where yeah, it's it's we print we we present in a certain way so that we can feel comfortable about ourselves. And then when we're trying to be in relationships and we have all these things that are in, make us insecure and we want to uh, and so we want to hide. But when we you know, if you really work in a, like I've known you, I've known you since you were 17. About 17. Yeah. Well, 17. technically, we met we met when I was younger than 17. But when I started doing stand up, it was about 17, About 17. And then we met before you was where, where did I meet you. At? It was uh, I think it was still the laugh factory. Oh, OK, OK. All but right. I was just a street team kid. Oh, OK. I would sneak and stand in the back and watch the shows. Oh, OK, that's um, crazy. That, but I mean, I watched my dad was I like, that still wasn't him. No, Dad. <laughs> Dante wasn't a street team member. Uh, I used to complain. Jersey Mike used to fucking. Your if dad, I, if he, I think his dad just want to fuck me up. That's what I think nah, is going down. Nah. He just want to fuck me up. So he's a he's a, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was out there selling tickets from like 14 to 18 uh, and, and beyond, Jersey Mike was the type of cat that if he saw I had a group of people around that I was selling he tickets, would snatch to, them. Yeah. he would swoop in and undercut my sale price. Yeah, he's a dickhead. So of course, oh, so like he try to yeah, he's like it's lower. Literally, yeah. if I'm selling a ticket for twenty dollars, which is the price that I was told to sell them for, this motherfucker would come in and say, "Look, this nigga ain't <laughs> shit. I will sell you the tickets for ten dollars a piece right now. Let's go." Oh, and then I'm standing there with Danish tourists like, oh, uh, well, you guys are both working for the same place. Dude. Yeah, that's the same place. Head. And of course, you, because comedy yo, club owners are. Tell your dad to mount up. We're going to go find Jersey, Jersey Mike. Mike. <laughs> I don't I think Jersey Mike got the COVID. I don't know what's going on. Uh, well, if the COVID didn't get him, Dante will. <laughs> Me and your pop the same age. So tell him we're going to stop him out tell with some classic white uptowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell Jersey I Mike. I actually got to get him some new sneakers. He's been wearing some weird shit lately. 
<laughs> no, weird. Clay those are weird sneakers. Sneakers. That, they're gonna be wearing feline. Those are Derek Jeter. <laughs> he got, he got British the walk, British, British. British Walker, son. On <laughs> niggas, <laughs> niggas did not. You if you was broke, if you got the British Knights, he used son. to rock the British Walkers <laughs> and the K Swiss. The K Swiss and the, I wear him, my K Swiss. Ask him if he remember the hippopotamus. You remember the hippopotamus, Dad? It was dating bitches wearing fifty four eleven hippopotamus Reboxes. boots. Hippopotamus boots. Hippopotamus. He said it sounded like some uptown. He's from Queens. He said oh, okay. sounded like some uptown shit. So he was at the Encore. Ask him if he's ever been to And Red's Adams. Cafe. He was up in Red's Cafe with them nasty bitches. <laughs> nasty bitches <laughs> he said you was in Red's Cafe with them nasty bitches. <laughs> he don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> My Whatever. dad was actually, he was actually, uh, he was moonlighting as a bouncer for a little bit. Moonlighting as a dog. So, how I don't know your dad? Dad, come sit down with me. <laughs> uh, he's like, I gotta get a drink first. Hey, so check right. all I'm all I'm saying is you gotta. Here's the thing. In the uh, you know what? Let's wrap this up and we'll do the rest of it behind the behind the uh behind the Patreon. Yeah, wall. yeah. We got another um, five though, Dante. Yeah, yeah. We'll wrap this up in the next five. Okay. okay. Um, what it is is you have to all things look when. A woman will say this to you all the time. She'll be like, well, I, you know, I'm educated or I have a Ph.D. or I got a whatever. Nobody cares about that. Your Ph.D. don't it doesn't do anything for me. What what you do financially doesn't do anything for me because I'm end up paying for everything anyway. You know, part of me being the provider means that your 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 money and your education. What I want is an easy time. I want you to make me feel like I can keep going to work every day, you know, and if I'm if I don't have that, then now I'm 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 fighting against the fact that I got I got to feel as though that you're offering me something more than what I have to give. Otherwise, why would I stay in a in a in a it could, because it's, the relationship is a negotiation. It's a it's a it's a contract. And especially from their end, because if they find something better, be sure they will leave. If she finds a motherfucker that she thinks is val- more valuable, bang. I'm, and I don't really blame her because can't because you can't tell you you don't want somebody around you who ultimately doesn't doesn't like. I don't want to be around somebody who don't like me. I do find though that the, the the problem is women change the value of what they have depending on what they have to offer. So if a woman is hot. If she's a 10, that's all that matters of value to her. But it's if she's not a 10, then all of a sudden the education matters. If she's oh, so, a, yeah, you're always hedging your bets. But here's the thing. Yeah. You can't that's like sell- Dante's joke about ugly women riding unicycles and juggling. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> you you got to be like, uh, you know, it's also a matter of it doesn't matter what you value as. You got to sell me what I want to buy. If I, I I don't I don't I don't keep well we're gonna throw in the PhD bitch I don't care but I don't care about your PhD <laughs> like do you like I mean do you like are you funny like you got a are funny you story interesting? are, you, are you, supportive? you you interesting you creative are you supportive do you know that I want mayonnaise on both sides of my fucking turkey sandwich I mean like that's what I give a fuck about. That's, I mean, I give a fuck about the stuff that I want. Now, the stuff you want to give me, all that extra shit that I don't care about, you, it doesn't have value for me. You know, I noticed do- she would talk about the things that she contributed. And I was like, that was low key for you, though. <laughs> when you really think wait, about it, it benefited wait, wait. both of you. Oh, yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I got yeah. you. I got you a sneaker organizer. I was like, that that's because you ain't like picking up my sneakers. <laughs> <laughs> Got you this, this, these hat hooks. Was like, that was also for you. We want to pick up my hat. He was like, "I got you. This, I got you this soap." Well, I was stinking. I was stinking. I got you this air freshener for the bathroom. Was, not for nothing. My dad for Christmas got me a manscaper, and I didn't know I needed it, man. Yeah, yeah, nigga, you need it. What's wrong with you? Well, I, it's been a pandemic. I haven't been expecting company. That's you don't do it because you're expecting company. You do it because it's what you do. 
All also, right. what about just for yourself? Don't you, yeah. you have a better grip when it's clean? Also, better you know? grip when it's absolutely it's nice and smooth. Whole sentence, man. <laughs> it's nice and smooth. What are you talking about? Fuck off, Harry. I know. Ah, I know. Grip hey, when it's I know clean. somebody who doesn't clean what their dick. That's hear? all I'm saying. Do you Harry, ever, yeah, do you ever son, manscape, Andre, or no? Do you ever manscape? This, uh, you get a better grip when it's clean. <laughs> nice and clean. It feels better. It feels a hundred. Harry, times I'm gonna leave you with my people at Manscape. No I way. Love, I want Manscape to sponsor the thing. I, you gotta, you gotta start writing their slogans, dog. Yeah, man. Better grip when it's clean. Andre, do you That's clean? Dangerous. Do you do you clean or no? Do you manscape at all or no? I've I've shaved. But that's I've never like put no thought. I give a little little bow, a little trim. Yeah, you don't want to like have an afro. Saying. Yeah, I'm coming really out your drawers. You got a hole. About. It's been yes, you, on the request of a when, woman. That's the only okay. time, pretty much. You clean up when you're expecting company. It really depends on the girl. Yeah, that's the some problem. Some girls be like, I don't want to see. That's the problem. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta be clean for you when you clean for you. Then yeah, you keep no, saying no, the word clean. I will yeah, shower. I no, I mean, no, 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 no. What I mean, I think what he's saying, yeah, look, he's talking about shaving. shaving. Yeah, yeah, that's what he's yeah. saying. That's what he's saying. That's what he's yeah, saying. So it's not they, necessary. They, they, you can't have it looking like it. a haunted house. That's Here's no what good. I'm saying. I don't go that much here, man. You Albanian, you a furball ass nigga. That's you true, that. but I got to listen. <laughs> then um, you got to do it every day. A lot. I got a whole I used to I used to have a crew come and do it. A crew of Mexican guys would come and do it. <laughs> they did a great job. But, you know, after the pandemic, yeah. hedge clipper, clippers. I let them yeah. play their music as loud as possible. It, it was nice. It was a good time. <laughs> They'd stop halfway through and eat Chinese food for lunch. You make them lemonade. Thing. Yeah. You know, Harry's hairy because he he don't have a beard, but he still got a beard. I know, this is crazy. <laughs> I just shaved this morning. I just the the fact that the, that sentence means at one point Harry was mm -hmm. like, I can't get a good grip today. No, that it just feels nice. It feels nicer it feel, when it I do it. <laughs> It feels nicer when I when there's less <laughs> hair. Christ, this is terrifying. Nice and smooth. There's nice and smooth. Um, Andre's Andre's being uh beavers and butthead right now. He's like this thing is <laughs> <laughs> it feels nice and smooth. When he be grabbing somebody else's dick, it feels nice and smooth. <laughs> I'm grabbing somebody else's dick. Andre is oh, 12. Geez. Hilarious. Andre is 12. We're going to fart and do fart noises. <laughs> Wait, you, you're not going to act like farting is never fun. Like, that shit funny. Farting ever. is hilarious. That shit is the uh, funniest I'll tell you what. Well, yeah, well, here's what's funny. Bro, I, as a human Rudy being, Giuliani, that was the greatest fart ever. That Hello, shit Rudy. was so funny. Oh, nigga, you didn't see that? No. Was it? So Rudy Giuliani was was yeah. was trying to get them to to go go for voter fraud. To, it was in the middle it. of testifying why they should. And this nigga the votes. just let one and just kept talking like it didn't happen. And the chick next <laughs> to him, did, the chick next was like, oh, shit. Right. And everybody <laughs> acting like everybody. Yeah, that's so funny, son. That was funny. That's but what I mean, I'm saying about farts. Like some some. Some. They put just the concept of it. Gas will build inside of your body and then release in an audible medium. That's that's a funny an audible thing. medium. That's just weird to me. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, Do you guys I, remember I, the first time you experienced a queef? Yeah. Yeah. How old were you? Andre kind of knew about high it. school. I laughed immediately. Oh boy. I, I literally giggled right away. <laughs> like on cue. I heard Dante, the what about you, dog? And I giggled. I kind of knew that about it, so it just it didn't really It didn't phase you. You was unfazed yeah, by the queen. I, I used to hang out with older dudes. It was like and then and so they would always put you on game, you know, like I would do with you. My dad just chimed in from the kitchen. He goes, I welcome that shit. I welcome <laughs> that <laughs> shit. <laughs> Go on, let it out. You say shit like that. Go on, let it go out. On, come on, clean in my face. Go on, let go it on, out. Go on, let it let it talk to me, girl. That's, nigga, that's, your, that's that's your pops. Um, his your pops porn search. His that's his search line. Wow, Ebony, Queef. Ebony, Queef. Ebony Queef in my face. Ebony, Queef. Yo. Ebony, I welcome it. Ebony, <laughs> welcome to Queefs. Damn, son. <laughs> if you put E B it the whole thing is gonna it's gonna come up. His history is gonna come right up. Boop 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 boop. 
Google be Google. What about be you, Harry? When was the first you? time you I, experienced I, a queef? I don't remember like the first time because I, I figured what it was. Like I figured it out. It was early on, but mm-hmm. it, I don't even remember the specifics of it. It still happens from time to time, but it still happens. From yeah. Time. You'll still get one of those every once in a while. And it's, you know, I'm a grown man, so it doesn't it doesn't phase me. I got a job to do, man. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, can't be distracted, point, but not, not, not when you were younger. Though. No, when I was young, but I still when I was young, I was just like, all right, let's keep it moving because I didn't want to do anything to disrupt the fact that I was having sex. I've been enjoying my life, son. I'm not going to let no shorty take know, it. I wish, I, wish I had it like I wish I had. I'm going to enjoy my life. I wish I had the ability to laugh about it. Like I yeah. was I was Bro, hanging out with I was having having fun time in the shower and shorty glasses fogged up. I died laughing <laughs> right there. I didn't even wait. But wait, she was wearing her glasses in the shower? Yeah, she had her glasses on. And the glasses so the whole got area with The whole area where the glasses <laughs> cover is just dirty? Nah, regular like she has bad vision glasses. But why is she wearing them in the shower? She's not washing that part of her face? I don't know, bro. I ain't asking none of them questions. He was, was fucking in the shower. Yeah, you yeah. asking all kind of questions. Damn, and that's man. not I was in my concern. He, he, it was he's not like he's it's not me. like it's not like he gonna go listen. I don't know what kind of fucking party you think this is. Yeah, you we better wash fu- that nose bridge, bitch. <laughs> you better wash fucking the shower with glasses you on. Wash that now, nose bridge. If you can't take those glasses off, you can get the fuck out. Anyway. Matt worried about corners <laughs> of the eyes and shit. <laughs> I just, you know, cleanliness is next to godliness. I was like, so I, 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 was like I was like, Matt, what's your a definite turn off? He was like, dirty oh. crow's foot. Dirty That's eye corners. Thing. I don't fuck with it. <laughs> Yo, Thank let's you. shut this down and go behind the Patreon. Uh, we're trying to pay, pay wall. Uh, plug your shit, uh, Matt. Just Matt was funny on everything. All right, cool, cool. Uh, Dre. Yo, Andre D. Thompson between spots. Andre D. Thompson on all of the stuff. That's it. Uh, Harry. Uh, I hate comedy.com. That's the website. All of my stuff is at Harry Trajanium. Um, but we also just started doing Man School 202 on Patreon. Uh, uh, Patreon and also TikTok this week. So we're on the TikTok. Hey. And follow us there because we're releasing new clips and stuff. And, uh, of course, the YouTube channel where you can see the visuals and you can see uh, Andre's display today. What's the display today, Andre, the background? Cereal. It's just just an out-of-focus picture. And then you wrote the words in handwriting, cereal. (laughs) Um, Because art is technically anything you want it to be. This thing is avant-garde. Don, I came to save my life with a man school shirt on and my dog shed all over it. Oh, God. Yeah, get it. I will get you a white one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. So, anyway, the man school show. I'm, uh, this is a couple of the samples. I'm working on it, trying to get it right. So, it's going to be up. The, the the merch store will be up soon. Uh, GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted. Yo, I love y'all. Um, thanks, Matt, man. I love you, bro. We're going to look go behind the paywall. Uh, we are out. Man School 202 is created by Dante Nero, hosted by Dante Nero with Harry Turjanian and Andre D. Thompson, produced by Harry Turjanian, executive producers Matt Kleinschmidt, Harry Turjanian, and Dante Nero.